Yes, I think I'm not going to start. So, welcome to my presentation about um, validation. I have uh, bad news. Uh, the title is this one is supposed to be validation uh, with Symfony from a Drupal perspective, but unfortunately, my Drupal knowledge, um, I don't have any Drupal knowledge. I wanted to learn Drupal, uh, but there, it was a very short time. So I won't be able to cover any Drupal-related stuff. I will just focus on um, using Symfony um, validator components, uh, and then I will let you try to uh, use it into uh, into Drupal. So please apologize for this uh, little issue. Uh, I don't have your skills in Drupal. So let's get started. Um, so my name is Hugo Hemon. I um, the head of training at Sensio Labs France. Uh, I live in Paris, so I came with my uh, colleagues. Uh, and so I'm uh, a Symfony contributor, so I, uh, I'm Symfony certified and also one of the contributors to the projects and to the documentation. You can find me on Twitter with HMN uh, user accounts. Uh, just a quick talk about Sensio. So we are the creator of Symfony. We raised um, 5 million euros at the end of uh, 2013, and we uh, create products like uh, Sensor Labs Insights. <clears throat> so let's get into this validation uh, talk. First of all, introduction, uh, why it's important to validate uh, the data. Uh, a quick reminder, as a web developer, you are, I guess, all web developers, make sure that to never trust any user inputs. Okay, so everything that comes in on your application should be validated and filtered. So when someone submits a form, for example, or when someone um, uh, uses let's say, a REST API you are, you are offering, um, so any data that comes in on your web server must be validated and filtered. So that means you should check the data format so for example, if you expect an email address, check that the value you receive has a valid email address format. That's the, um, one of the data format check. Also check the consistency of the data, which means if, for example, you are dealing with um, an e-commerce website, you are selling conference tickets, if someone can change the quantity, make sure that the quantity, for example, is a valid integer uh, greater, than, uh, greater than zero. Okay, so one, two more, uh, that's on. But don't accept, for example, negative values for, uh, for quantities. Check that the data, uh, check the data integrity. For example, if the data contains uh, HTML code or JavaScript codes, make sure that this code is, uh, is, uh, is valid for your needs, or otherwise filter that data, remove these sensitive um, characters or pieces of code from uh, the data you are validating. So it's about validating, but also filtering. In this talk, I will just uh, focus on validation, not filtering, because the validator component only validates the data. But as you know, doing validation is not that simple. If you already have played with validation in, in PHP projects, you probably have already written lots of code, lots of bloody code to validate data using regular expression, uh, checking lengths, for example, uh, checking formats, and so on. It's not an easy task uh, because sometimes validation um, is, are related to uh, complex rules. And this is what we are trying to offer with this validator component. We, we want you to, um, um, to, write, uh, I would say to write less code and to be able to write complex rules um, without complexity. Um, so if you are in this session, is that probably because you, uh, you are interested in Symfony? Just a quick word about Symfony uh, framework, which is used by Drupal. So Symfony is a framework, so a toolbox, a set of components that you can pick and choose. Uh, it's also a philosophy, which means Symfony is an HTTP framework, and we try to embrace the HTTP protocol um, as most as possible. Um, so we focus on standards. We have lots of, uh, uh, we are trying, yes, we focus on standards in Symfony. So we respect, for example, PSR0, PSR1, PSR2. We also take lots of inspiration on what's done in uh, other 
um, uh, languages like Java or Python. And of course, I guess the most important symphony is also about the community. So it's not about the symphony community, but uh, in a larger way, it's also the Drupal community or any user who uses uh, a tool that uses some symphony, uh, some symphony parts. So that makes symphony uh, a great tool. Um, as I said, Symfony is a set of components. So you have uh, something like 26 or 27 components as of today in, uh, in Symfony. And you can just pick and choose those components and use them uh, in your PHP project. So Drupal already, use, um, already uses something like 12 components. Um, and you can uh, add extra components to your Drupal projects. On a side note, Symfony is also a full stack framework. Um, so you can use it. Uh, as a global framework with everything inside and, and third-party dependencies. So let's take a look at this uh, validation component. So if you want to use it in a PHP project or in a Drupal project, for example, you will have to require the dependency, the validator component dependency. This can be easily done with, um, with Composer. So everyone knows about Composer. Yes, yeah. So Composer is a dependency management system. You just describe the dependencies your PHP project require, and then you run the command line tool, you run Composer command line tool to, to tell, install that dependencies. And so Composer will resolve um, the dependencies you want to install. So if a dependency has also other dependencies, Composer will install all the required dependencies um, in your PHP project. So each component in Symfony can be installed with Composer. So each package name is symphony slash and the name of the package. So in this case, symphony slash validator. This component uh, has uh, several dependencies with other symphony components. So uh, Composer will grab the other uh, dependencies of the validator components. Uh, tile means from, so from 2.4 version, for example, or you can uh, already install symphony 2.5. Uh, 2.5 has been released mm, last week. Uh, but Drupal uses Symfony 2.3. Uh, as Symfony 2.3 is a long-term supported version, it's supported for three years. Uh, whether this this version 2.4 and 2.5 are just uh, supported for uh, eight months, but it's really up to you to choose 2.3, 2.4, 2.5, whatever versions you want. Has the 2.4, 2.4 and 2.5 versions are backward compatible with 2.3. So if you start using 2.3, you can then migrate to another version, so greater versions without breaking backward compatibility. <coughs> um, I'm using, in this case, 2.4 or 2.5. Uh, has the validator components received some new features I will show you in, uh, in those versions. So how to get that validator in Symfony, uh, or if you use the, the components? That's pretty straightforward. Once you have installed the dependencies with Composer, you just have to require this validation class, this validation namespace from the validator component. And they, this validation class has a static method called create validator. So it just builds a new validator object. So you get back this validator object, and then you are ready to go and you are ready to validate data. So just one line, and you have a validator uh, setup. With this validator object, you can validate data. So for example, there is this validate value method. You will see that we have other methods on this validator object. But if I want to, to validate a single scale of value, I can use validate value. I give it the value I want to validate. In this case, it's an email address. And I will validate this email address, this value, against a constraint. So a constraint in Symfony is an object. So as you can see, I'm instantiating the email class. So this email class is the email constraint in Symfony. <coughs> And the validate value method returns um, a set of errors. So it's not just an array, it's an object. It's a constraints violation list object, which is an iterator object, an iter iteratable object. Um, so you can count on this object. And if this violation list contains at least one violation inside, that means your value is not, uh, is not valid. If the violation list is empty, your value uh, is, uh, is valid. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. You just Give them the, val the value you want to validate and the constraints against, uh, against you want to validate the value. Of course, you can combine those constraints. Uh, let's take this example. Uh, I want to validate a username. So my username, double H Amen, 
So I want this username to uh, to be uh, uh, five between five to fifteen characters long. So you can see there is a length. We have a length constraint, which takes some options. So some constraints may have options to configure the, the behavior of the constraint. So the length constraint has a mean and a max option. So you can constrain um, uh, the edges, the, the limits of the string. And I also want to check the formats. So I'm using a regular expression in this case. We have a regex uh, constraints. And this regex constraints has a pattern option. The pattern I want to match is uh, only uh, uh, um, alpha, numeric, uh, alpha characters, so only letters from A to Z. And I don't care about the, uh, the case, so it's case insensitive in this case. Okay, so you can combine, you can pass an array of constraints, so just one constraint or an array of constraints, and the validator will execute all of these constraints uh, on your value. So that's for the basics. Uh, I will show you uh, the API, uh, the objects involved in this validator component. And then from step to step, I will show you an example from very basic validation to more advanced uh, complex rules. So we saw that we have a, the, the primary object is the validator object. This is the main object. The validator uh, simply validates a value, a single scalar value, as we've seen. But you can also validate an object property, or you can also validate a whole object as itself against a set of constraints. And this is what uh, we are mostly interested in, in validating objects. So we are going to encapsulate data into objects, and then we are, we'll ask the validator to uh, check the content of these objects. Um, you have four validation methods on this validator. So we saw validated validate value. You also have validate property, which means I want to uh, uh, to only execute the um, um, the validation constraints on the email property of my user object. You can see user the user variable is a, a user object. Uh, I can use validator property value, which means I want to check that the value of the email property of the user object is foo at bar dot, uh, tld. And the most interesting method is validate. Validate is just a method that receives an object. You give it that object, and it will validate uh, the, uh, the objects. So we are going to focus on this validate method as it's the most interesting one. As I said, the validator, when you validate a value, the validator returns a constraints violation list. So it's an object which contains all the violations that have been raised uh, for uh, during the, the validation process. Okay, so a validation, um, um, a violation is a failure, it's an error. So when you validate your user object, for example, you are getting back a constraints violation list. Then you can iterate over this um, violation list to get each error. And each error is also an object. It's a constraints violation, which contains the error message. Um, and this object, this error object, implements a two-string method. So you can easily echo or print the error. It will call the um, two-string methods for uh, debugging purposes. And you will see that these error messages are uh, translated also. So the component c comes with uh, translation files. Um, so the validator validates the data against constraints, as I said. The constraints is the object that describes an assertive statement. So it tells how the, the data has to be validated. But the constraint doesn't contain any uh, validation logic. It's just a description of the rule. Okay. So basically, we saw that a constraint is an object. It's a class, so we have to instantiate the class. Uh, all Constraints classes extends the base constraints class. So we have a base type constraint, which is an abstract class. And you have few things in those classes. Most of the time, you have public properties. Okay, And these public properties are options. So these are the options you can configure. Remember, when I pass the options as an array, an associative array, in fact, when you, when you give an array of options to the construct method, which is defined in the base abstract class, um, this, uh, the, the options you have in the array are simply feeding these uh, public properties in your object. So if you 
If you search for documentation, just open the classes and you will know which options you can configure in any uh, constraints objects. Some constraints classes may have methods, uh, some, some methods, but uh, most of the time it's just about uh, public properties. So each constraint, to trigger the, to perform the validation logic, each constraint has an associated constraints validator instance. So you have, a, for example, a regex constraint and a regex validator which triggers the, va the, the business logic of validating the value against um, the regular expression. So this is an example, the, the regex validator, which is a built-in one. Each validator uh, is a, a class, is an object that extends constraints validator. And this base class is abstract, so you must implement validate method. These validate methods receives two arguments, the value you want to validate and the constraints object, uh, which contains the, the business rule. Okay, so if you are using the regex validator, that means the object you are receiving here is the regex object, which contains the options of um, the, the, the regular expression validation. Um, so as you can see, the validate methods check if the value is null or empty, that means uh, we we are skipping the validation, uh, and if it's not empty, then we are processing the, the business logic of validating this value. And we have this special object, uh, context, the execution context, that allows you to uh, set a, a violation uh, in, um, in the violation list. Okay, so this is this object which contains all the violations. So I want, uh, this is how we, how we can validate uh, a value against a regular expression with this um, validator. So we have lots of built-in constraints you can use uh, out of the box. Basic constraints like not blank or blank, so if you want to check that the value is not blank or uh, if the value must be blank, or you want to check that the value must be true, let's say for example a user must accept the terms and conditions of uh, the website, so you will apply a true constraints on, on the checkbox. Uh, you can also check that a value is of a PHP uh, internal type, like integer or string or uh, boolean and so on. We have string constraints, for example, the length constraints I've, I've showed you. Um, you have email constraints. Um, the email constraints has options like check MX if you want to um, uh, to perform an MX query on the on the web server, uh, on the server, on the email server, to check that the domain name uh, exists. Uh, and recently in Symfony 2.5, we also added a strict, strict option which perform a strict validation. So you can choose when validating an email to just check that the, the format is valid or that the format is a strict RFC compliant email format. It's really up to you. Uh, you can check for a URL or an IP address also. Uh, they are built in. Comparison constraints, if you want to check that a value is greater than another value or lower than a value or identical or equal to. So all of these constraints are also built in in, Symfony, uh, in the Symfony components. Date constraints, if you want to check a date. So a date can be a daytime object. It, it can be um, a timestamp or it can be a valid date string like MySQL strings. Those validators will be able to handle any valid date representation um, as, a, as the value. Um, unfortunately, we don't have um, a date range constraint. For example, if you want to validate that uh, the date you want to validate is between a date and another date, this is not supported uh, as of today. Maybe in the next version, there is, we have some pull requests um, on the repository about um, implementing such validators. Uh, I really like those ones, uh, number and financial uh, constraints. For example, you are building um, an e-commerce website, so you want to validate a card scheme, a credit card scheme. So we have a card scheme built-in validator. For example, you give it the, uh, uh, the, the, the scheme of, of the, uh, the, the credit card provider, like American Express, and it will check that the number uh, is a valid American Express card. Um, or you can check for um, an IBAN bank account. So if, if someone provides uh, a bank account number, you can check that the number is, uh, is valid using the uh, Loon algorithm. Currency also, you can validate that the currency string is valid, let's say USD or U, uh, EUR. You can check for an ISBN if you are selling books, for example. 
So these are built-in uh, uh, constraints. I think my favorite one is image uh, constraints. You can validate pictures. So if, for example, you, you let people upload pictures for their profile, then you can check that the image is one of these MIME types, so JPEG or PNG or GIF, whatever. You can check the max size, let's say one megabytes, and you can also constrain the width and height of this uh, of this picture. So you want to uh, allow pi allow pictures uh, with a, a mean width of 120 pixels, and you can specify the max height, max width, or mean height. Uh, we have other options for this uh, image. Um, uh, constraints. You can, for example, specify the, the ratio. So if you want to check for a ratio, that's possible. You can check that the picture is uh, portrait or landscape oriented if you want to force a portrait or landscape ori orientation. Um, so all of these options are built in in, uh, in this um, image constraints. Uh, we have range constraints. Um, so collection constraints, for example, checking that a value is uh, in, a, in a list of permitted values, of allowed values. So this is the choice option. So for example, I have a, uh, a choices option saying I want to define uh, an array that contains values between 10 to 99. And if I submit, for example, the value 30, I will check that 30 is a val valid value between 10 and, uh, and 99. Uh, same for the list of languages or the list of locales or the list of countries those are built in so you can check um, those information. I will show you this one count uh, later on, which allows you to check the number of items in a collection. This one is quite complex collection. You can, uh, you can validate an array. If you are using um, array instead, in arrays instead of objects, and you want to check the values inside an array for each keys, for each associative key, you can use this collection constraints and for each associative keys of your array, you can apply a set of constraints that will be um, executed against the value. Uh, and last constraints we have built in, um, the valid constraints, which check that an object, an embedded object is also valid. I will show you this one in a, in a real example. User password, I don't think you are going to use it. Uh, it's really tied to the Symfony security components. Uh, it allows you to check the <coughs> user password. So if the user has to retype his password, uh, when updating his profile, for example, uh, this this is this visor that checks that the, the the retype password corresponds to the previous password. Uh, I will show you the callback uh, constraint, which is quite useful, and also expression, which is a new one since Symfony 2.4. Okay. So that's a, a big overview of uh, the constraints we have built in Symfony, and of course you can create your own constraints, as I will show you. So you can. You can choose to uh, define the validation uh, in several formats. You can use YAML, XML, PHP code, or annotation. It's really up to you. Uh, it depends on which format you, you, you prefer. I really prefer annotations as it's more concise, so I will mostly focus on annotation during the, 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 in this presentation. But I will show you the four different formats. To configure uh, those validation formats, you have to configure the validator with the validator builder object. So this is basically an object that pre-configures the, the validator you want to use. And this is how it works. If you want to create a validator object uh, that can use YAML or XML or annotations or PHP code. So when you create a validator builder object, you can add um, validation mapping formats. So I can register um, a PHP method mapping. So this is a static method I will be able to use uh, in my object to, to map the constraints on my objects. Or I can register a YAML file that will contain the validation rules. Or I can uh, register a val uh, an XML validation file. Or I can enable annotation mapping. So this is how you configure the, the validator. So this is how it looks like in PHP. If you want to use raw PHP code for validation, if you have your, your object, let's say another object, an order has a reference and a customer email address. I want to apply constraints on those two properties so I can implement this load validator metadata, metadata uh, static method. Remember that this method is this one. Okay, I've configured in my, uh, in my builder. And then this method receives a metadata object in which you push the constraints you want to apply for each property. So for the reference property, I'm adding a not blank constraints. And for the reference property again, 
I'm pushing a length uh, constraints. And for the customer, PHP property, I want to uh, push an email uh, constraint. So this is how we can map uh, constraints to your PHP object properties. PHP is fine uh, as a configuration format, but it's quite verbose, so you have lots of uh, code to write. So that's why YAML is probably better uh, to, um, to extract the validation outside the object and to, be, to, to make it a bit more concise. This is how it looks like. In your validation.yaml file, you tell that for this class, shop backslash order, so this is the namespace of the class, I want to constrain the properties of my object, and for the reference property, I'm adding a set of constraints, so not blank, length, and uh, regular expression. And for the customer property, I want to add not blank and email. If you want to do that in XML, it's a little bit more verbose, which is this, uh, this code. So as you can see, for this class uh, order, I want to add uh, constraints to the reference property, and for each constraint, I will apply the options. Okay. So if you have a, an ID like PHP Storm or Eclipse or NetBeans, that's not so verbose to type, as the ID will provide code completion. But if you use Sublime Text or Vim or whatever text editor, it will be uh, quite painful to write. So stick to, to YAML. And annotations, which is my favorite. Uh, if you want to use annotation, you have uh, dependencies, third-party dependencies to install, Doctrine uh, especially. So Doctrine, the Doctrine project uh, provides the, the annotation parser. So you need those dependencies uh, to use annotations. And this is how it looks like with annotation. For each property, you can attach uh, constraints using annotations. So it's just about tagging the rules with annotations, and then you're done. So as you can see, it's much more uh, simpler, much more concise. The main drawback is that you are mixing PHP code with commented code with configuration, so that's the, the main issue. But otherwise, it makes the code concise. So I want to show you now all the, 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 the capabilities you have use as using this, um, this component. I will keep my order object. So we have an order object. Let's say we are selling products on the website. And my order project has a reference, a customer email address, and um, a number of items, a number of lines I want to order, so a collection of, uh, of items. So we saw how to validate the reference and the email address. So I am adding assert not blank. So as you can see, this at assert uh, namespace is this one, symphony component validator constraints that I'm, I'm aliasing with assert to make it shorter. And then I'm using add assert not blank, add assert length. We have the options, min and max, regular expression, and not blank, and email address for the customer. Okay, so if you create your order objects with a reference, uh, an invalid reference, and an invalid email address, when you, tr when you try to validate this order object with the validator, then the uh, violation list, this error violation list, returns these uh, strings. So for the reference, we must have exactly 10 characters. For the reference, the regular expression didn't match. This is the default error message for the regex uh, constraint. And for the customer, I didn't send a valid email address, so I have this uh, error message. But the most interesting is how to validate this collection of items. How I can check that to, to validate the order, I must have at least one item in the order. Yeah. If I have zero item, that means I don't have any order. So um, I want, this is my, my rule, I want to validate that the, the order contains at least one item, one line, and it can't have more than 10 lines of ordering. So in my order, I'm adding lines with my add line methods. Lines are arrays, which contain uh, some properties like quantity, the quantity of the order I want to, uh, to order, the product I want to order, uh, the reference, the designation, and I want the designation to be um, uh, optional, but the other ones are, uh, are mandatory. So you can just use add assert count on this array. So as you can see, add assert count, and I want at least one element and at most 10 elements. And I can also override the default error messages. So we have min message option and max message option. So these are the two error messages that will be raised. Of course, those messages can be translated. They are just translation strings, translation identifier. So you can just use uh, 
uh, a unique constant name if you want, uh, an abstract constant name as the identifier. But in this case, I'm just using uh, sentences. And this is how I can validate that this lines array contains between one to 10 lines of um, products. But I want to get uh, more in-depth in that lines uh, array. Because remember, we are pushing those information, but I want to validate that each line has a quantity uh, key and each line has a price uh, key. So this is what I want to, to do. So I want to validate each line of my uh, order, item, um, order object. So I'm, I'm adding a line with quantity, price, reference, and designation. And then, this is going to be tough. Um, we have this line property with the assert count, the previous assert count assertion. I will use add assert all. Add assert all means I want to apply constraints on all elements in that collection. And the good thing is that you can nest um, assertions. You can nest the, uh, the constraints. So inside the assert all constraints, I'm pushing an assert collection sub uh, constraints. So assert collection is for each element, each array, uh, each um, line item in my uh, lines uh, collection. And for each field, for example, for the reference associative key, I want that the reference to be required and it must be not blank. So required means the reference um, associative key in the array must be set, but it, the value must not be empty. Okay, so required is just about testing that the, the, the key is set, but it doesn't check that the value is, uh, is not empty. So that's why I'm using assert not blank uh, in these uh, constraints. For the quantity, I want the quantity to be required, so the, the key must be set in the array, and the value is mandatory, it must be a valid integer, and it must be at least one. Okay, so I can't have a quantity less than, than one. And the price is required, uh, it must be a valid double uh, um, type, and I can accept zero as the, uh, as the default price. So if I want to provide free products to order, uh, zero is an acceptable value. But it can be less than zero. And for the designation, it's optional. So if I don't set the designation in the array, then the validation will be skipped for that, um, for that information. Okay? So it's quite a bit complex in this case, as you can see. Um, so the code is a bit bloated with comments, but it works. This is how you can, you can do that. There is, of course, a better way to achieve this um, validation. Can you guess which one? Do you have any ideas? Without, not YAML, well, without using, um, using a, different, a different way, not using add assert uh, all or add assert collection. Yes, adding more objects. Basically, you just nest objects and you validate sub object instead of validating arrays. So that's the deal. Instead of using arrays, you create a new order line object which contains the uh, elements of each uh, line, uh, line element in your order. And for each property, you will add your validation constraints. Okay? So then, in your, in your main script, you have your order, you are pushing order line object, which contains the information. And in your main order class, instead of having this add assert all with all the nested constraints, you can basically just say add assert valid, which means you are, you are explicitly telling the validator go down into the collection and validate each object inside this collection. Okay? So that's the, the meaning. If you don't put add assert valid, then the validator will just perform the, the count check, but it will not go down inside the, 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 the collection to check the values uh, inside it. So avoid using add assert collection or add assert all. Try to use um, um, the, uh, the sub-objects if, uh, if you prefer. It's better. Okay. So now let's say we have a coupon. We can apply coupon code on the order to get uh, a small discount. So the coupon must equal a string. So you have to specify the, the, the unique string of the coupon code. So basically, you can use add assert equal to. You give it the, the value of the coupon. And then if I set, let's say, um, if I set a different value in my, in my property, then the, uh, the validation will fail. Okay, so that's a very simple constraint. But I want a more advanced constraint with this coupon. I want the coupon to be valid if the code is valid, but also if 
I have ordered at least three items, and if I have at least 850 USDs uh, of purchase, okay, so I must order at, for at least $850. So we have a more dynamic business rule to execute. And the problem with YAML or XML or annotations uh, formats is that those formats are static, they are static files. So it's difficult to, uh, to design um, uh, a dynamic business logic. So since Symfony 2.4, there's a way to achieve that with the expression, the, the brand new expression assertion. So Symfony 2.4 comes with a new component called uh, expression language. It's, um, it's an expression en engine that allows you to write some expressions like this one. And these expressions will be analyzed by the uh, expression engine. They will be compiled down to PHP and they will be executed uh, in a sandbox environment. So there is no risk of security issues. And this is how we can mix a static configuration format like YAML or annotations or XML with uh, a more dynamic business rule. So in this case, I'm telling, so the coupon must be DrupalCon 2014, and the coupon uh, will be valid if the number of items in, in my order uh, are greater than two, so at least three, and if the subtotal of the order uh, is greater than 850. So I just have to implement those two methods, get number items and get subtotal, and then the uh, expression constraints will be uh, executed. Okay. And this is how we can have more dynamic business rules. Um, let's say that's to continue with this order object. If you have an order, you have to set your uh, billing address and your uh, delivery address. So in, the, uh, in an address, if you are based in the US or in Canada, you must set your state or your province in, uh, in Canada. So if you fill your, your, your country and if the country is US, I must check that the state code is also provided. If it's another country, I don't care about the state. So my order object has now two properties, billing address and delivery address, and they are both address objects. I've created an address object, an address class, which contains the elements of an address, so city, zip code, state, country, and so on. So I want those two properties to be set, so they can't be blank, and they must be valid, so I, I want to validate the, the nested address object. So this is my address object. It has a street, a zip code, a city, a country, which uh, all have these uh, constraints on them. The country has an assort country built-in constraint. So Symfony knows the list of all countries in the world, so you can check that the, the selected country is valid. And we have the state, which is optional. And as you can see, the state can be set as uh, the last argument of my construct method. So how to achieve this? this logic to check that if the country is United States or Canada, the state must be set as well. So you can do that using a validation method. So the constraints can be applied on properties, but you can also add constraints on methods. And those methods must be prefixed with git, uh, with git, with get or is prefix. That's mandatory. The validator only executes method that returns value, and they must be prefixed with is or get. But then the, the, the name you have right after the prefix is or get is really up to you. So I, I chose to use is state required and field. I'm using an assertion on it, an assert false. That means I expect the return value to be false. If it's something than, other than false, then the error message will be, uh, will be triggered, will be fired. So this is where I can put my validation logic. This is my custom uh, validation rule. If the country property contains uh, Canada or US, uh, if it doesn't contain Canada or US, then we don't have to care about the, uh, the state. Otherwise, we have to check that the state is empty or not empty. And if, it's, if the state is empty, then we are triggering, we are firing this uh, error message. Okay. So this is the, uh, the error in the, uh, that will be output. So we have uh, for the billing address, and for the billing address, we have the state required and filled property or methods, but it's, uh, it's considered as a path, as a property. And we have the error message that we can translate. Okay. So you can apply constraints on properties, but also on methods. And you can also apply constraints on classes um, with the special um, 
uh, with the special callback constraints I will show you. The problem with the getter method constraint is that you can't attach the error message to a very particular field. Okay, if I switch back, the error message is linked to the name of the method we have executed. So we can't put that error message to another field. But I would like this error message to be applied on the state property because it's related to the state. So I can do that with a callback constraint that I will put on the class itself. I want to validate the whole object as itself. So with add assert callback here, um, I will specify the callback method in this class, in this object I want to execute. And when you use the assert callback function, you will receive um, an execution context uh, object. I think since Symfony 2.4, you can now use the callback constraints on the methods directly instead of on the class. But when you use callback, the callback uh, constraints gives you the execution context, and this object allows you to map the error message to properties. Okay? So in this case, I'm telling that the violation I want to, to attach will be attached to the state property, even if I'm validating the value with a method. Okay. And then, as you can see, the error message is now applied on the state instead of on uh, the, the validation method, which is much more convenient. You can, of course, create your custom validator. So. What about validating the state, the state code? Because if you fill the state, it doesn't matter. It doesn't mean that you have filled uh, a valid state code. Okay? So if you are in the US, we have the list of all US codes, uh, US states code. So we have to check that we selected, for example, CA or FL or I don't know, so TX for Texas. So as Symfony doesn't have these built-in constraints for validating um, uh, a state, a US state or a Canada province. You can create your custom validator constraint. Remember, a constraint is just a class. So I will first create the constraints class, which is, for example, North America state, which extends constraints. I want the default error message to be state code is, state code is not valid. And this uh, constraint will be applied on a class. So it must be applied on a class. I'm forcing the target to be a class constraint. You will see why. If you use at annotation, if you, if you write the at annotation annotation, that means this object can be used as a doctrine annotation. You can use at uh, North America state in your, in your code. That's the meaning of at annotation. So remember that the constraints must be associated with its uh, corresponding validator, which performs the logic. So I'm creating a North America state validator. So it must be the name of the constraints followed by validators. This is how Symfony guesses well, uh, what is the validator associated to your, uh, to your constraints class? So I have my list of uh, US states and my list of uh, Canada uh, province. And the validate method will perform the validation logic. So this is what it does. Remember that this constraint is applied on the class. I, I made it a class constraint, which means the value I will receive is the address object. Okay? I will not receive just the state, but I will receive the address object because I want to know the country in the address object. So I'm checking that the value is um, an address object. If it's not an address object, I will leave the validator. It's, I'm not supposed to validate something else than an address object. Here I'm receiving the North America state constraint. So from the constraint, uh, from, the, um, from the address, I will uh, pull the country uh, selected by the user. If the country is different than US or Canada, I don't have to validate the state. And if the country is US or Canada, then I will check that the state is a valid state in my uh, allowed list of states. And if it's not, I will add my violation on the state uh, property of the address object. Okay. So this is fairly simple. So you can write your custom validator. So every time you have a custom logic, you can write your validator. Yep. Uh, what do you mean? You mean here? Uh, you put validate dollar sign value. Validate. Sure the yes, you can. You can use a, You can. Uh, you can use an interface here if you want. Okay, so let's come on specific okay. Yes, the, the instance of um, keyword in PHP accepts uh, classes, so concrete classes, abstract classes, or interfaces. It's really up to you to choose the type you want to uh, to check.
So this is my concrete type, my address concrete type, but I could use a, an address interface if I want. But he can't use it as a type hint because it's uh, uh, it's uh, and in, it, it it needs to inherit the signature of the uh, yes of the, yes uh, that's the, why you you, you constraint validator yes you can't type hint uh, with address here because the validate method is an abstract method in the base class which is a um, an abstract class so it's part of the interface so when you implement the method you you have to respect the signature from the base class so that's why you can't type in with address. Uh, for the value, and you have to check it inside uh, the validation. Um, so, as you can see, I'm putting the North America state constraints on my uh, on my address object, on my address class, and that's all. This is how I can validate that the state in the address is a valid state in the U.S. or in in Canada. Um, you can go further um, with validation groups. Uh, for example, you want to validate your object depending on the context. You want to contextualize the validation of your object. Let's say, for example, you have a user object, and the user object, when the user registers to your application, the user must fill the username uh, and the password. But if the user uh, edits his or her profile, then the username can be changed, so you don't want to revalidate the username, and you want the, username, the password to be, uh, for example, optional when you edit your profile. So depending on the context, you don't want to execute the same set of constraints, and that's the goal of validation groups in, um, in Symfony. So let's say for my order that the reference can't be changed uh, after, after the, the, the order has been created in my database, for example. Uh, the order can't be changed. It's a unique value. So I will add a, a groups option, which is, for example, the create group. This is, a, this is just a, a name I want to apply. So I want this constraint to be triggered only if the validator is configured to trigger the create validation group. But then the length uh, option is also uh, as we validated in create group and same for the regular expression. So the, 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 the reference property will only be validated when I'm, I'm using a create validation context. And this is how you can pass uh, validation groups to your validator. You just give it a, an array of validation group. So the default is the default one. So uh, this string is the default validation group. So all constraints by default uh, have this value, default. So I want to execute constraints with the default validation groups plus constraints with the create validation groups. Okay. So the reference property will be validated if the validator is configured with the create validation group. You also have group sequences, which means you can uh, you can validate uh, a value. Um, I said, uh, you can create steps to validate your object. So you have a first step to validate a set of data, then you stop, and you have a second step to validate uh, the other data of your object. Okay, so the group sequences allow to validate an object in multiple steps. For example, you will attach a group sequence constraint on your class. So the first group is the name of the class. So this, you must match the name of the class here as the default, the default uh, group sequence. And then we have, let's say, a chipping um, uh, group sequence and a payment group sequence. So if you want to validate those information separately, uh, you just split your validation process in steps. So for example, the reference will be validated first in the order um, uh, group sequence. Uh, and if the reference is not valid, then the validation uh, will fail and it will stop. So that means I won't validate the other steps as long as the first step is not validated completely. Okay? And same for the chipping. I, I will not validate the payment as long as chipping is not yet validated completely. Okay? So that's the meaning of validation um, uh, of group sequences. Um, so, in fact, group sequences are just validation groups. Um, so, you just, once again, validate your object with uh, a set of groups, and then the validator uses the group sequence annotations to know in which uh, sequences you have to validate your object. Uh, I'm almost done with my presentation. I have a few things to show you. Uh, class inheritance. If you have inheritance in your classes, that also works. Let's say, for example, we have uh, a complementary uh, complementary order which extends the base order class. So we want a free order for, for ordering free products or free services. 
So my complementary order extends the base order class, so I want to, to get the constraints from the base class, but I want to overwrite the total and the VAT value to check that they are always zero, as it's a complementary order. Okay? So as you are using inheritance, the validator will also execute the constraints in the base class. So it will check my lines, my uh, billing address, and my uh, delivery address, and so on. And finally, translations. I told you that you can translate uh, the error messages. So Symfony gives you lots of different kind of formats to uh, store your translation messages. Uh, you can use XML files, uh, XLI files, which is a standard format for translations. You can use YAML files, PHP arrays, you can use uh, uh, get text, or you can use a database storage engine. It's really up to you. Symfony has several adapters with the translator components. In this case, I'm, I choose to uh, use a, an XML file to, to translate my um, validator error messages. So this is my error message. Uh, so this is the key, the unique key, the identifier, which can be a, a constant. In this case, it's a sentence. State code is not valid. And this is the translation in French for my um, um, error message. By default, Symfony provides uh, translations for all the default error message in several languages, so including English, French, German, uh, Italian, and so on. And in this case, I want to create my own custom validator.fr.xlef file. So I will use the translator component. I need the translator component. I will register my XML, uh, my XML file loader, and I will register this file as a translation file. And then I will pass the Symfony translator object into the validator, the Symfony validator. And automatically, all the messages will be translated with this um, uh, translator object. I know that Drupal has its own custom um, translation system. And as far as I've seen in the code, they wrapped the Symfony translate, translator components in their uh, Drupal new translation component. So behind the scenes, Drupal 8 is using, also using the translator component of Symfony. So if I validate my object, as you can see, the error message, if I'm, in, if I'm asking for French translations, I will have my uh, error messages translated into French. Okay. So as a conclusion, as you can see, you have lots of things you can do with this uh, validator component. It's very well documented in, in the symphony.com website. Um, I think I gave you the overview of approximately everything you can do with this validator component. So feel free to use it. And um, that was easy to, uh, to validate my order objects. If you have any questions, we have 10 to 5 minutes left. Yeah. I'd, okay. well, Could you repeat yeah, the question? Yeah, the question was, um, is, is it interesting to, to decouple the translator component from the validator component, or to decouple the validator component and the translator component together to have more loose coupling between the two components? I don't think so. Uh, as I said, Symfony is a set of components. You can pick and choose uh, the one, each component you want to use. Uh, but also Symfony is a set of a set of components. It's a, it's an all-in-one. So, for consistency, I guess it's better to have some tight coupling at some points in in the, in the framework. So, I, I don't think it's a big deal to have a coupling between the, the Symfony translator component and the validator component, as long as the validator component relies on an interface, on Symfony translator interface. So you can create your own implementation of the translator if you want. You are not forced to use the Symfony concrete implementation. So it's real. You just have to to have the interface uh, to implement. But maybe if uh, one day the, the, the PHP FIG group um, uh, ha provides uh, a built-in uh, standardized translator interface, maybe Symfony will use it for more standard uh, implementation. But I don't think it's a big deal to have a coupling between the two components. They are consistent together. Another question? No? Okay. So on the validation, there's a validator for like a collection of the properties of a class. Mm -hmm. What if I want to validate like something that is not defined, like something like if I have a uh, an array mm -hmm. like 
Yep. And even though I can do a global validator constraint, I cannot uh, say, okay, validate all of the properties in this array. Yeah. So the question is, uh, in the, the collection uh, constraints I showed you, uh, I use the, uh, for each line I have the reference, the quantity, the designation, and uh, another uh, property. So it was a, a limited set of, of information. So I know them in advance. The question is, can we validate an array which contains uh, an infinite set of, of uh, properties? Uh, the collection constraints allows you to, uh, there's an option which allows you to add uh, extra fields. Um, I think uh, I've described it somewhere. Um, but when you, when you use add assert collection, you can use the uh, allow extra fields option to true, which allows you to pass more than the fields you have set in, uh, in the collection constraints. So if your array contains extra fields, uh, they, will be con they, they will be skipped in the validation, but the validation will not fail because you have extra fields. Be no, because you, don't, you, you didn't apply any constraints uh, on that. Um, let me check if, if there's an option I have, maybe an ID, uh, just collection. So we have so we have the fields we want to validate, allow extra fields, and you can also allow missing fields. Now, we don't have any uh, option to, to configure the default constraints to execute uh, on extra fields or on extra fields. So maybe it could be um, uh, an improvement to, the, to this constraint to add a new option, let's say, default constraints for, miss, for uh, extra fields to trigger uh, a set of constraints when you add extra fields. Are these slides going to be available for us to download? Yes. Uh, they are already uploaded. You can get them on my speaker deck. So this is the URL, speaker deck slash HMN. There it is. So they are online. I just have to re-upload them because I've changed a little bit the presentation uh, before the, the talk. Uh, but I will, be upload, uh, I will upload them on the same URL. So speakerlake.com slash HM and you have my presentations, including this one. Okay. No questions anymore? Yeah, you can use your get text loader. There's a get text uh, No no you have uh, the translator component uh, so component translator and loader. There it is. Here are the, the built-in loaders in the translation code. So array loader, CSV, ICU, INI, JSON. So MO and PO for get text. PHP file, so PHP arrays, and QT and XLIF and YAML files for storing your translations. If you want to support the database engine, you have to write your own implementation. Okay, yes. Yeah, it's 2 p.m., so thank you very much.